three we yeah. beat you yeah. in the team uh -huh. and uh, original uh, uh, originally I uh, set up this uh, for our international uh, teachers That's right. because first of all because uh, we uh, from the 109 eating joke uh, we are going to uh, have the global issues especially UN SDGs right. uh, integrated into our freshman English courses That's awesome. and I know that uh, you have done a lot mm -hmm. to do with the UN Taiwan mm -hmm. can help That's right. and uh, our for, uh, international mm -hmm. students <laughs> yes. And, and also so this, this oh, right. Also this, this, also this thing, right? Right. That's the other. I know. Right. Right. Can I collect it? Yeah. It is, oh yeah, yeah. You can. Every year is yeah. Back. Right. 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 So as I, uh, because I know uh, about this your. Uh, and this is last year's. Yeah. Your you and Taiwan can help. That's right. Mm -hmm. And actually, we start. To uh, book the uh, to be with uh, right. poultry tongues, yeah. and in March, but at that time when we started, okay. there's no we don't we didn't know about the pandemic. Okay, and then so I think uh, we should I should have uh, our foreign teachers to visit you. Yeah. All those whatever you have done, it's hard for me to tell them. Okay, and so I would like them to. Uh, to to, yes, right. yes. Yeah. Uh, but it's turned out we yeah. have yeah, one uh, from uh, Philippines mm -hmm. and he's a uh, Taiwanese from uh, Canada. Canada, so oh, right. we consider foreign teachers. Okay. <laughs> and uh, uh, and here now we have uh, several, let me introduce them sure, to, 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 to you. And then we have uh, the chairperson, director of the Global Foreign Language Education, okay, okay. a long name. Yes. And the, this one uh, uh, Kitty is uh, director. director. Oh, well, yeah. Business, uh, International Business Administration. Oh, oh yeah. Nice. And well. originally, our dean, uh, Ren, Ren Li Song, uh -huh. uh, he said he met you. Right. Right. And, but now he's uh, somewhere in uh, uh, Ban uh, Ban 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 oh, Yeah. Okay. Probably he couldn't make it, but I said, be okay. sure to come here to make a conclusion. Yeah, okay. so we maybe. Have two hours, right? Right, so, right, right, right. Maybe yeah. he could uh, <laughs> make it's it. quite long. Right, right. Yeah, and fine. then yeah. uh, we have uh, uh, a representative of a civil servant uh, oh. from our program. We oh, have yes. every summer. Uh, this is the seventh uh, uh, year we. Uh, we design an intensive English program for the civil servants in Nanto, uh, civil it. servants uh, development yeah. institute, right? And this is a representative, the excellent one. Your name. Right, right. So, uh, so let's. Uh, we can uh, here. We have several topics, uh, issues to go. First of all, since uh, we, we have introduced our program, mm -hmm. and I know the bilingual nation policies, uh, mm -hmm. uh, our nation will like to have uh, strict, especially uh, the civil servants to be mm -hmm. able to communicate. In English. But in English, yes. Yeah. yes. But uh, from the educational uh, part, we mm -hmm. know that the government and the MOE are mm -hmm. going to have uh, to train more uh, bilingual teachers uh, right. for those uh, bilingual programs, yes. uh, 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 subject courses. But how about the the general people? Mm -hmm. How about as, uh, especially the uh, civil servants uh, mm -hmm. people? How will uh, mm -hmm. I? I'm not sure the vision. Mm -hmm. It just say that. Uh, they mm -hmm. want to be able to communicate mm -hmm. in English. Mm -hmm. But uh, one question is, most of the time, they deal with local stuff, local people, mm -hmm. and the general one. And for him, he's the high-ranking uh, official <laughs> for that program. Okay. But uh, the, uh, the institute told me that they are going to have online uh, courses as our opinion, but I don't have mm -hmm. Uh, any good idea? So I would like to ask you, okay. how would we uh, design for the 
civil servants. Mm -hmm. uh, the program was uh, uh, successful, one, so mm -hmm. it continued for seven years. Okay. But each summer, only 20, about 24 high-ranking uh, officer they can come mm -hmm. and they stay for one month intensive program. And I'm sure everyone is, was so uh, satisfied with this, but uh, can benefit uh, not so many uh, in general. Uh, so mm -hmm. can you mm -hmm. tell us uh, how yeah, we will the, design? What, what, what are you yeah. trying to do? I mean, are you trying to reach more people? I think that the institute wants to do so. So okay. I need to have that kind of uh, online, maybe mm -hmm. online courses. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And what's the vision for mm -hmm. the civil servants, mm -hmm. the officials to mm -hmm. have a certain kind of ability? Mm -hmm. They need to take the, mm -hmm. the English proficiency level, mm -hmm. like a TOEIC uh, 550 mm -hmm. B1 mm -hmm. level. But that will become like uh, the, the strange style. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the, the main vision is just that people who do not have um, you know, Mandarin or any one of our national languages, there's plenty of them now, uh, including oh. the Taiwanese Sign Language, uh, Indigenous Languages, Hakka, uh, Holo, and so on. Um, and if you're uh, not a native in any of these languages, um, at least there should be a English as a default uh, for, for you to work with. And, and that is um, a little bit um, difficult to uh, ask all the government officials when they do day-to-day -day, uh, work to speak in English mm -hmm. if they do not have English constituents, right? Mm -hmm. If they don't interact uh, with people who speak English, if they only interact, for example, if they're in the Hakka, Hakka region, of course they are uh, much more um, you know, amenable to learn Hakka. If they're in a Amis or a Kayal or uh, Taiwan or uh, Sakiraya, uh, then they're, uh, so but what we were saying, bilingual, we mean whatever the dominant local language is, plus English. So, so it's not like Mandarin plus English. Right. Because as a civil servant, if you're in a uh, region, in a district, when there's a over half of the population speaking any of those non-Mandarin national languages, uh, now uh, you would be uh, required to take the proficiency uh, certificate in that particular language. It could, ah. be, it could be Hakka, it could be uh, Akayal, uh, or things like that. Mm -hmm. right? So so that's um, the, the sign. And uh, uh, so I think uh, what we're doing now is to make sure that at least on the digital room, uh, where there's a website and things like that, uh, we at least have an English version uh, for the people who do not have the national languages as native languages. Uh, and in the day-to-day -day, uh, business of the uh, public sector, uh, we look systemically at the places where the main stakeholders uh, are uh, like uh, people with residence certificates, uh, foreign travelers, uh, people on either a visit visa or all the way to the Taiwan code card. Uh, and so if these uh, visa holders uh, are the main stakeholders or one of the main stakeholders of any particular regulation, then that regulation has to be uh, announced in a draft stage for the stakeholders to be involved with uh, in English also. Uh, so this is a very simple idea of nothing about us without us. Uh, so like people who uh, are going to be affected uh, need to have their voices heard. And if we only make the announcements of the deliberations, the regulatory drafts and so on in uh, Chinese characters, uh, then even if they might be impacted, they are the last ones to know. And, and that's simply not fair. Uh, and so, the, uh, for example, the joint platform, the public participation platform with participatory budget and things like that. Nowadays, uh, there's a uh, regulatory pre-announcement uh, and you can see that uh, we're now announcing in both languages, uh, in Kanji and in um, English, uh, whenever there's something that uh, concerns the um, you know, uh, foreign people uh, when it comes to um, the main stakeholder groups. So, so that's the main vision. And, and for, so we're not forcing everybody to, to get certain certificates because we, if we do so and they do not practice in their everyday work, uh, that's really not very helpful. Uh, but, but if we can uh, improve the uh, language environment so that more people who do not have the national languages as a uh, native language uh, are willing to consider themselves to be um, also Chinese, uh, that's, that's a big win. And, and that, to that end, we're also offering like dual citizenship uh, to, uh, like there was a um, 
uh, associate professor of anthropology, uh, recently uh, got um, you know this dual citizenship, get a national ID card, and all that. They're renouncing uh, his original uh, passport, uh, and and that uh, used to be only uh, reserved to you know priests and nuns that have served for four years. Yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, have made an uh, extraordinary contribution to, to our country, yes. but, but, but now um, if you're a professional, that's enough. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so that's a, that's a very different that's direction uh, mm -hmm. as compared to the, to the old policy, mm -hmm. right? It uh, used to be that the, the, um, the most of the people would say, oh, the, the foreign talents are, are fine, but they're uh, not part of our citizenry, mm -hmm. but, but I think we've been expanding our citizenry uh, to be much more transcultural. So, mm -hmm. so that's the vision, and the uh, English capability is uh, one of the goals uh, yeah. along the way. But it's not the ultimate goal. The ultimate goal is to make this a more uh, transcultural place. Mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. So, for those uh, who need this kind of certificate yeah. or the civil servants. Mm -hmm. So the government will have a plan for mm -hmm. how to help them, support them to mm -hmm. learn, to get the proficiency? That's right, that's right. And, and that's also <coughs> part of the work that we're having uh, both in the HR department within the administration, uh, as well as the HR department as its own government branch, the examination yuan. Uh, and so the, the, the yuan and the administration uh, was on kind of different schedules, <laughs> and so it, it took literally yes to, to move simple things. Uh, for example, um, the capability of asking for a uh, leave of absence counted by hour instead of by day or half day. Uh, and that took like more than a year for the examination yet to, to pass. Uh, but uh, if you're a, a homemaker, you know that uh, this kind of flex flexible gas is very important to improve the, the work of uh, the public service. Uh, a similar one is the teleworking uh, protocol, which uh, is more important during the COVID, of course, but even after COVID, we would expect people who uh, want to work uh, remotely uh, mm -hmm. to take care of their family, to uh, go back to their non Taipei uh, you know, origins. I just came back from Taichung, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, could, could do more of their work uh, from Taichung uh, mm -hmm. or from any of the counties and cities. And that would also need HR help. Uh, and so uh, right now we're re-establishing the um, communication between the examination grant, the new examination grant, uh, and the administration because now we're both on four-year terms. Uh, and so uh, I expect that this uh, will be much more smooth uh, from this point onward. Mm. Uh, all we know is about the uh, educational uh, parts that uh, the teachers training will uh, recruit and start to cultivate and train the bilingual teachers for the elementary school, especially for those uh, non-English subjects, right? And so, but uh, but it seems we the. Uh, we know about the 2013 uh, bilingual nation, yeah. but uh, in, probably we are in the university, so we don't know that uh, how is the, uh, uh, the nation, Taiwan, going to become a bilingual country. Mm -hmm. right? A lot of uh, people will doubt it. Mm -hmm. And in general, what kind of model is it uh, like uh, uh, the Hong Kong style? is? It's impossible to become like a uh, Canada's uh, uh, bilingual mm -hmm. uh, version like education, French, French, uh, French and yeah. English, yeah. Yeah, that kind it's of language. Yeah, or like uh, right mm -hmm. the bilingual uh, mm -hmm. definitions. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, how uh, what uh, level uh, Taiwan is going to mm -hmm. achieve mm -hmm. that kind of, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I think the, the main idea here is uh, not to pass examinations. I'm sorry to say. <laughs> there was many, uh, you know, there were many different strategies uh, that we can consider here, but passing examinations is not uh, is not one. Uh, this is more about uh, to make uh, the nation much more friendly. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, yeah. to people who do not have Mandarin or any of the national languages as native uh, speakers. Uh, and also, um, the idea is to have a culture of English learning, uh, and that mm -hmm. works with the lifelong learning. Uh, 
mm -hmm. idea because uh, our K to 12 curriculum, which just got to be architected uh, last year, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the the K to 12 curriculum uh, is now focused on what we call the competence uh, education. Yes. Uh, and the competence education focuses on one's ability to learn throughout one's years. It's not just, uh, you know, you finish K-12, you have to go to a university or college, and then uh, you uh, enter the society and stop learning. <laughs> that was the overly linear point of view. Uh, but, yeah. now, but nowadays the point is that uh, the university, the college, and so on is always there whenever mm. you need it. Right. So once you finish K-12, you don't have to go to the college or university, you can just um, I don't know, really? Yeah, volunteer yeah. or to <laughs> yeah. The, the 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 main hurdle uh, against that 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 was a President Tsai Ing-wen platform uh, four years ago. We already got the yeah. uh, first rate of the induction, and we yeah. have less uh, students. No, I know, but you're every having, university you have more lifelong learners. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. So I have to right. promote that. Right. right. It, it's not that uh, you know the more ties it is better uh, business for you because instead of the student only enrolling in university once. Yeah. Uh, we are looking at a zigzag uh, where yeah. they uh, finish the high schools and maybe uh, work uh, or uh, become an entrepreneur or whatever for a few years and then they decide they want to learn international yes. management yes. Uh, or things like that and then they uh, enlist the help from the local school uh, and then the universities uh, would be then uh, working with people who are much more motivated. Mm -hmm. uh, then they are them 19 years old. Uh, right. It was all good time, uh, and so <laughs> and so that will cultivate people's proficiency because they are where it needs yes, university yes. rather than their parents need to get the university right. uh, yes. diploma, right? And then uh, after they finish maybe a two-year course or a four-year course, they uh, maybe uh, do this alongside their work. And once they get uh, promoted or do a slashing, do another job or whatever, they will uh, remember their alum community and then go back to the co uh, college again uh, yes. for another degree and then for another degree. Yes. So, mm -hmm. uh, I expect people to engage in university more frequently mm -hmm. throughout one's life, which mm -hmm. is uh, well over 80 years now mm -hmm. in life expectancy. So, so amortized, I think, is more business to you. <laughs> and so, yeah, and, and so. Um, but the, the point of allowing uh, the 18 year olds to choose their own uh, life uh, courses, their own career, um, really uh, is quite a disruptive one for the Taiwanese culture of uh, getting a university mm -hmm. degree no matter what, right? Uh, and um, it's true that Mr. Education in the past few years when they try to convince the senior high schoolers uh, to, you know, go, go to the world really, uh, and then uh, start learning uh, on their own. Uh, they faced uh, the most uh, difficulty with the parents' uh, attitude yes. because the student may sign up for that program right. only to say that oh I have to drop from that. Yeah. And when we asked, uh, they, they would say oh my, my parents don't want me uh, mm -hmm. to to go to yes. work. Uh, they they would think that I'm a Hong Kong a kid worker or something, <laughs> right? Uh, or a a a gig economy worker mm -hmm. uh, and so on, which is uh, seen as kind of negative attitude uh, from in Taiwan's uh, culture. So um, then we decided to fix the problem uh, from the other route, uh, which is to make 18 years old adults. And so they don't have to you know, listen to their parents anymore. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it used to be that you have to be 20 years old to enter a contract. Yeah, and, and then next year we're looking to, uh, to change that to 18. My daughter is 18, my son is 20. Mm, okay. <laughs> so I'm kind of conventional. I want them to finish a degree, mm -hmm. just like other parents, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, one of them says, Mommy, mm -hmm. if that's not my passion, why should I go for that? That's right. Let me, let me try what I like to do. Mm -hmm. But you won't let me. Mm -hmm. Because I always believe that you know uh, a certificate, a diploma, mm -hmm. would give you more stability, mm -hmm. right? That, that, that certainly used to but be true. But that used to be. Uh, uh, that used to be yeah. true. Yeah. Yeah, as a junior high school child, so I, 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 I very really know, but that, that I heard it used to be true. <laughs> <laughs> so Matt asked, sure, what is your vision mm -hmm. if this university could be open more flexibly uh -huh. to the public? And, yeah. Uh, but now. Um, what we recruit students is from uh, the, their application or from the exam. 
and in your picture, what in the future, how we invite more people or students that feel more motivated to come mm -hmm. to the university? I, I think uh, just as uh, when we're looking at the university social responsibility, the mm -hmm. USR mm -hmm. programs, yes, yes. Uh, the, the, uh, the students who do work in the USR programs often see it as kind of a capstone project, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. they, they enlist all sorts of different proficiencies in order to solve a local social or environmental or economic uh, mm -hmm. problem, right? So they enjoy working for the social impact and the environmental impact uh, alongside, of course, the, the career the economic uh, incentives. Uh, and so that's called the triple bottom line. Uh, and I think um, especially around the undergrad age, uh, a, a social environmental bottom line is easier to achieve actually uh, than you know random incubators uh, that expect them to turn profits mm -hmm. <laughs> because it's uh, it, it takes on average like three or four pivots or failures uh, <laughs> in order to find a working business model uh, when you're an entrepreneur. But if you're a, a undergrad, and, and I include that um, in that Monica, like people in their 40s and 50s who go back to the college, mm -hmm. you're still undergrads, yeah. right? So, uh, and, and when you're an undergrad, you're, you're allowed to fail because that's part of the learning process. Mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, I think failure would mean uh, less if you say that the failure is just a scientific exploration, mm -hmm. if we document and we publish and we inform other people that this way doesn't work, like mm -hmm. Thomas Edison said, you know, mm -hmm. I, I did not fail, I find this yeah. material doesn't work. Right? <laughs> then, then it encourages more experimentation and it encourages uh, like failing in the open, which is uh, always informative to the community around them. Uh, and so I would say that this triple bottom line uh, idea uh, is definitely uh, the key to get people into this problem-based learning mindset because it constrains the problem into an artificial problem of just one bottom line, a very linear one, like a, a competitive uh, one, uh, then uh, I don't think that will get people's interest uh, when they become lifelong learners. Uh, when they're lifelong learners, they're much more willing uh, to work with people across different disciplines. It, it fulfills a common good uh, for all the different disciplines involved. And so like uh, regional placemaking uh, is one of the prime examples of the USR's uh, local impact. Mm -hmm. I think it's quite interesting, but I'm talking about the fundamental mm -hmm. methods, yeah. how you improve students uh, for those who want to return to the university. Mm -hmm. It's like um, at the moment, uh, we only recruit by the exam or the mm -hmm. applications. And are there any new proposal from the government that mm -hmm. will be Yeah, I, I think uh, what we're saying is that uh, you can look at their portfolios or should she really be, uh, right? The idea of a portfolio based. Uh, but it's also based on the high school's uh, portfolio, it's not from. Well, the it's, it's, it's true that what we're saying is that the high school needs to make a portfolio yes. in a certain format. Mm -hmm. But we're not saying that only high schools can do that. But what, um, what is the, um, uh, the system to. Uh, Evaluate yes, exactly. Well, exactly. just like any curator or any HR uh, department. So, are there going to be some uh, mm -hmm. private uh, institutes? They be uh, like um, guaranteed by the government. They will be able to uh, prove this portfolio is valid. Mm -hmm. so yeah, that's that's one part of it. Yes, uh, just like uh, you know, the certificate process. It could be. An institution issue, it could be peer based. Um, it, there's many uh, ways of going about this. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, uh, I think this is uh, all up to the, um, the professors. If the professors want to assemble a team to, uh, to help the lo local community fix a local economic, environmental, or social problem, but they know that they're going to need, for example, designers, anthropologists, they're going to uh, need people of different backgrounds and so on. So it's um, much easier if you look at it uh, in a way that when a team is being formed, uh, what other roles are missing in the team. Mm -hmm. uh, that is to say, to make the people who are actually already doing the work, it could be a um, community placement uh, institution, it could be a local community college, mm -hmm. uh, it could be um, the local associations and so on, and they all have their own uh, HR expertise, mm -hmm. right? And, and so uh, you can ask them uh, to review the applications mm -hmm. uh, that want to enroll into your university because you now serve as a hub. Uh, for their issues to be tackled as part of the problem-based solving set. Mm -hmm. and, and so you essentially, uh, it's not crowdsourced peers, so it's <laughs> your review process, 
um, with the institutions that are going to be part of your stakeholders in your problem-based learning course. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And another question could be said um, uh, in charge for bilingual education yeah. um, school. And uh, my basic uh, um, uh, job right now is to cultivate pre-service teacher to become bilingual teachers. Yeah. And I find it very challenging because uh, um, it's difficult to find uh, funding uh, for my program to support this uh, uh, curriculum that I want to design. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, I know this is from uh, MOE, they have different division, and they seems mm -hmm. they don't have a very well communication between each other because one division is, uh, is for information and the other is uh, mm -hmm. supposed for the uh, pre service teachers' training. But uh, both of them actually propose to uh, have this uh, digital education yeah. uh, learning. Um, but uh, for those, uh, the division for the teachers' training seems doesn't know. Uh, the other division is actually doing a, a very similar pro program. Mm -hmm. They uh, actually give funding for those who uh, in the um, in, in the countryside of the minority uh, students uh, to have this uh, we call digital partner and, and then mm -hmm. the university students will uh, help those uh, primary mm -hmm. students. Yes, yeah. situation. Yeah. 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 Yes, yeah, mm -hmm. but it seems the division for the teacher's training doesn't know anything mm -hmm. about that. Okay. And I, because I wish that I could uh, have a digital platform mm -hmm. for, uh, to include uh, those kind of uh, website, um, Tutoring for mm -hmm. the, um, for, uh, because we are in Salu and mm -hmm. it's uh, close to the uh, harbor in ah, Salu. Okay. Yeah, and some uh, students, uh, they probably hardly have uh, the resources uh, yeah. for uh, learning English. Mm -hmm. So I think a digital partnership, uh, this is situation and it's quite uh, important for especially for our area. Yeah. And uh, I think my problem is I, I have very limited uh, support from the MOE, and I don't know how to start with this uh, platform, which I really think would be helpful for our community. That's right. So um, usually uh, the way to go about this is not to integrate the uh, divisions mm -hmm. uh, because um, well, they exist for a reason, but, but rather uh, to ask uh, them to publish more. Um, usually, uh, we ask the uh, people involved uh, in different teams uh, to publish their materials. Uh, it could be as easy as this conversation, right? Mm -hmm. This conversation is going to be posted on YouTube uh, under a Creative Commons license, uh, which is CC Attribution 4.0, which uh, means roughly that if you include the hyperlink to the source, uh, you can reuse this material uh, in another division's program. Mm -hmm. um, and when uh, all the different sites start accumulating uh, such materials for life to use, then you have the social objects to talk about. Like, um, we get YouTube comments uh, all the time from editors, like, <laughs> can you add chapter titles? Um, can you make the recording better? Yes, I uh, can. <laughs> yeah, there's too much re reverberation in the room. <laughs> so uh, right, so, so uh, it gets people uh, more aware of what other people are doing if they can include those materials in their own curriculum, knowing that uh, they do not have to negotiate for patent or for royalty or things like that. So the first step is, is always um, to, to publish um, instead of to do to, to perish. <laughs> <laughs> right. and, and, and we, we have a lot of uh, publishable materials just as a uh, normal course uh, of our conversations uh, during the conversation of our uh, policy making, for example, when we're um, even in the um, planning uh, uh, sessions, uh, if you just record a transcript and publish it, uh, people are going to, to find it if they uh, find the keywords and things like that. So uh, my, my main suggestion would just be uh, to publish as much as you can uh, and with a uh, goal of getting your materials included, even just a few of them, uh, into other division and other um, you know, schools' materials uh, and work um, horizontally, like not just with the university system, uh, but with uh, the lifelong education system, uh, community colleges and so on, uh, as well as the K-12 system. Uh, and so uh, once you have visibility there, it's easier to kind of play this outside game 
uh, that says uh, the other divisions cannot ignore your existence mm -hmm. because uh, your material now powers uh, these stakeholders outside of the university and therefore are too important to fail. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And the one more, according to the because of the bilingual education mm -hmm. from yeah. primary school to uh, uh, secondary school, mm -hmm. and uh, I think. Uh, maybe three years ago, when was it? Uh, uh, MOE started to ask uh, the teacher training uh, center to, are they willing to apply for the uh, whole English uh, teaching uh, program? Teaching and English in English, is that? Yeah, yes. the yes. English as a mm -hmm. medium of uh, instruction. Ah, uh, that okay. kind of, okay. uh, and the nine, plus, uh, right, and the nine uh, university are included in uh, so called uh, what they are training uh, uh, bilingual teacher uh, or in, uh, English teacher. Or no, no, no. Or, or uh, we were talking about CLIL, right? The, yeah, CLIL. Uh, yeah, so, so that's a CLIL part. Uh, no? Yeah, CLIL uh, part. The TIE part. Okay. Yeah, CLIL part. Mm -hmm. And uh, our director, Chen, uh, she would like to, we would like to apply that uh, uh, program that it seemed to start mm -hmm. for the nine universities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But okay. we are really, really yeah, we're uh, struggling for funding. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. Want to be one of the, could they just uh, open uh, for us? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we missed uh, the information. Mm -hmm. uh, at that time, we were not the directors. So I see, I see. But right. I think it's important mm -hmm. if you wish to have more bilingual teachers, and then we need to have uh, the Mentor to train those who are interested in bilingual education. Okay, so what you're saying is that the MOE no longer makes grants uh, yeah. to no. Berkeley? Yeah. They close it uh, when uh, uh, one year. away. Yeah. Right, uh -huh. right, right. So, okay. uh, well, in Taichung already there's uh, Taichung uh, uh, University, University of, of Education. Yeah. That, um, we are in Salu and we are private school and we have uh, lots of uh, students around. And we think we can contribute to okay. this part. So, uh, yeah, maybe one more. Providence <laughs> <Okay. laughs> okay. University would like to do that. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, okay. And the next question. Yeah, but, but, mm. uh, so, um, are, you, are you saying that the, the uh, Gaojiao's, the higher education department, is not funding Kuil anymore? But but because the the, uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, okay because the K two twelve uh, administration is still funding a lot of clear uh, activities. Uh, yeah, uh, but go, go mean, uh, 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 you know, clear empowerment workshop is still going on, so... Yeah, <laughs> yeah. right. Yeah. But I think it's sponsored by the Zhongzheng uh, University. I see, I see. The particular yeah. university has... Uh, I see, I see. Uh, ah, okay, yeah, okay, I see. I see. I see. So, 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 so maybe they, they, they just changed contractors mm. or something. Uh, I don't think it's a... It's a, you know, we're moving away from clear thing, uh, because otherwise no. the... Uh, otherwise, this clear workshop uh, will not have a Yeah, that's <laughs> why I suggest that maybe the government should have more, uh -huh. like, the, uh, for example, communication. Yeah, sure. Because they don't really know each other what they are yeah. doing. Mm -hmm. so, that's okay, how I so, so, you're, so you're, you're okay with clear? Yeah, yeah we yes. are just in your okay. workshop. We really want to have clear. Okay. Okay. That's okay. why uh, in our uh, fresh, well, mm -hmm. starting from the new uh, uh, coming semester, all of our freshman English will mm -hmm. integrate it at the SDGs mm -hmm. into our English uh, uh, that's right. that's the content. Con that's the content right? Yeah, not just for the language, mm -hmm. but uh, mm -hmm. the content. Okay. Okay. That, uh, right, so mm -hmm. originally SDG bring me to set up the okay. Okay. for the meeting. That's the content. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yes. right. And uh, one, uh, since uh, we just attend the uh, EMI uh, mm -hmm. programs, uh, okay. uh, uh, conducted by uh, British Council uh -huh. and uh, at the higher education level 
uh, now the Nata Wuhan University wants uh, to have the teachers uh, mm -hmm. using English as the medium of uh, instruction. Yeah, I'm aware. But uh, some of the uh, what will uh, what kind of bilingual uh, situation that uh, the university uh, the nation or by 2030. That do you wish to have uh, all in English uh, uh, university like uh, those in uh, in, uh, uh, in the yes. Netherlands? If, if they, they wish, wish to. to, if they wish to. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's a it's a it's a um, possibility, but it, it's not saying that we uh, are going to be English only, Mr. Um, because. Um, for one, yeah. indigenous languages <laughs> will, will also uh, assert their possibility of uh, teaching the content integrated with their indigenous languages, right? So um, I, I think the, the main part, like I just came back from from Inda, right? And, and mm. their their model UN, of course, is all English. So so it's a pretty oh. good example of content integration mm -hmm. uh, because they also talk about SDGs uh, and yes. and they have this international department, right? That designs. Mm -hmm. Uh, this kind of exchange, but it kind of trickles out uh, to, to their senior high uh, and to their uh, skilled senior high and, and eventually I'm sure to the junior high as well. Uh, and so if they choose to do so, uh, it used to be that there's a lot of regulations and so on that are kind of Mandarin centric uh, that will make uh, their life harder. Uh, to design such a curriculum, especially uh, on the younger uh, ages. But but now the idea of bilingual nation is that if a uh, school decides that that's the feature of the school, uh, then uh, we should do everything we do to support them instead of discourage them. But we're not saying that everybody should switch to teach uh, content in English. Mm -hmm. and that's not what we're saying. Oh, but uh, my question is, it seems that uh -huh. uh, we didn't see the support from the uh -huh. government. It's the university, like uh, our university uh -huh. is a private one, the, the, so the yeah, school the, wants uh, us to right, do it, right, and then right. the teachers sure. from the button will say, uh -huh. uh, reject the idea. But mm -hmm. if there is a, uh, I think still, uh, by, uh, I feel that uh, the by nation, uh, bilingual nation policy is mm -hmm. not so strong uh, mm -hmm. in general. Sure. Right. It's because we just got started, but yes. Yeah, yeah. So there are lots of things uh, yeah, yes. to, uh, yeah. to implement, right? Yeah, yeah, and it's for the higher educational uh, uh, the part. Mm -hmm. uh, nowadays we know clear for yeah. the uh, for the part. Yeah, yeah. But it seems uh, uh, the higher education is just yeah. from the university. Yeah, I, I, I mean, uh, there's a lot of acts like mm -hmm. in the in the legal uh, part. Uh, to uh, relax the uh, primary and junior high school act, the senior high school education act, private school law, re related regulations and so on that are too Mandarin centric or too Mandarin specific. Uh, 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 because uh, in the uh, administration, uh, we uh, Yifa Xinjiang, right, do our administration by law <laughs> and, and hopefully of law, right, uh, and uh, because we, we need to be lawful. Uh, and so a lot of those laws and regulations need to change, like the regulations for elementary and junior high school's normal class, the grouping procedure, group learning, and things like that, that all need to uh, have the capability of including English as a kind of first class language because it's not one of the national language of a Uyotsuchun, of a, um, you know, uh, extant as a group, or however you call it, a, a traditional culture mm -hmm. in Taiwan, uh, as our national languages are. Maybe you can argue Dutch is, but English is certainly not. <laughs> right. um, and, and, so, uh, and so that needs to happen before we can do the full bilingualization of, uh, for example, the uh, caretaking activities in the preschool, in kindergarten, in the curriculum, and so on. And once that happens, then you have then in the primary education people who think in English, uh, as I do, I think in English. Um, and so then after that, six years down the road, you will then have people uh, in the junior high schools uh, thinking in English and so on. So, so that's why it takes 10 years. Uh, because uh, we start realizing yeah. the laws and regulations from the kindergarten level, yeah. and it takes time for them to grow, <laughs> right? Where we're not um, accelerating their growth, yang uh, right? We're just making sure that the um, students can uh, work with uh, a uh, regulatory environment that doesn't require a school to become a experimental school, a a in order to do 
uh, for bilingualization. Uh, at, at the moment, experimental schools uh, like in science parks uh, and things like that, of course, they are already like full immersion. Uh, but uh, it used to be uh, that be, that's only because they can sort of ignore the curriculum, taking advantage of the Experimental School Act. But it's um, not thinkable for all schools to become experimental because then uh, what what what's the meaning of experimental anyway? <laughs> and so you know, Experimental School Act only up to ten percent of students um, can enroll in experimental schools. And so the point is that to take the not really best practice, better practices uh, from those experimental schools and then uh, ratify it in the uh, ordinary Guanxing, um, Wominjiao, whatever, the, <laughs> the, the regular K-12 uh, curriculum so that uh, they can much more easily uh, develop uh, the group instructions based on aptitude and English proficiency and efficiency. So that's why it takes time and that's why yeah. it doesn't, it doesn't uh, all the way start from the college level because mm -hmm. the people who uh, are studying under this relaxed uh, regulation are now maybe just seven years old or eight years old. So, so it takes 10 years for them to be your students. Yeah, right, yes. yeah. yeah but now uh, the students mm -hmm. in the university will become like the, the lost generation without the bilingual yeah. Why? education uh, when they Why? start. Why? They can really enroll in undergrad. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, I, I think in a certain right. way, in a zigzag way. Uh, oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, everybody right, right, can right, become an undergrad, right? Right. 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 So, you're right. E even if you're a you know professor in physics, you can re-enroll as an undergrad in sociology. I mean, there's there's nothing wrong. And then, with that. so now mm -hmm. the teachers must be prepare mm -hmm. those uh, coming uh, uh, young generation yes, exactly with right. bilingual who uh, think from English, who yeah, native right. English. So we have to hurry. Yeah, that's right. And the, the, mm -hmm. The whole university knows about Yeah, well, you have roughly eight years. Yeah, Okay, let's come back to the original SDGs. And uh, sure. now, since everyone knows that uh, Taiwan can help, that's right. Since yeah. uh, about uh, because of the pandemic, uh, but before I can, uh, I know we have done. Uh, my, I think that my question is in terms uh, of uh, SDGs. Uh, uh, what have been done in Taiwan? Particularly that uh, our foreign teachers, we, yeah. we teach English, we yeah. bring the international perspective to right. our English uh, uh, classes to our students. But sometimes uh, I think uh, our students need to have some kind of uh, encouragement that we have done a lot and we yeah, know right, it. Uh, so could you? Yeah. I, I think uh, from one interview, you uh. was uh, one uh, in an interview program with Ling Sidon. You um, mentioned about we yeah, help this, yeah, this, we help uh, the social innovation platform. Yeah. Right. We um, help uh, New Zealand in some yeah. way about the water. Can you specifically mm. tell us sure, about the course. story? Of course. But it, it's online, so if you just search for water savior, uh, you you see oh, okay. all of it. Yeah. It's called a water savior. Uh, and ah, uh, right. Savior, so so if, water right. So so it's a um, annual. It's, they save water, so they're water saviors. <laughs> uh, it's a, a annual event that we run. It's called a presidential hackathon, and every year uh, we work with the social innovators uh, who may come from any sector uh, in order to um, better the society using the seventeen SDGs, uh, and they can propose whatever idea that they want using whichever data from whichever ministry. Um, and then uh, we um, make sure that people learn about their ideas, vote on it using a new form of voting called quadratic voting or QV um, to make sure that we find the teams that uh, are most balanced uh, in terms of their environmental, social, and business uh, impact. Um, and so the Taiwan Water Corporation uh, was, uh, I think it was a, um, cross-sectoral team uh, from the corporation itself, from the III, uh, that's the Information uh, Industry Institute, uh, from the National Zhengzhou University, uh, from the MIS department of our cabinet, uh, and um, I'm missing a few, HTC, uh, many people. Uh, they, they formed a, a team that uh, looked at the water pipes in Taiwan uh, and detect uh, the leakage uh, before the, the 
uh, people do. Uh, and because uh, it used to be that they have to uh, listen to the water pipes um, in order to detect a, a leak uh, with this type of stethoscope like equipment. Uh, but uh, on average, this is I think the Geelong region. In the Geelong region, it took on average two months for a leak to happen for it to be listened to. Uh, and so there's a lot of water uh, mm -hmm. down the drain, uh, literally, Waste. uh, <laughs> uh wasted. Uh, and so they built this um, chatbot uh, that mm -hmm. analyzes the water pressure, the water flow, and so on, a lot of different uh, measurements, mm -hmm. and uh, tell these uh, senior um, fixers uh, like where uh, are the points near them that are more likely to have leaks. So they can um, spend their time on the creative part of their job, which is to fix the leaks, mm -hmm. instead of on the boring part of their job, which is listening to the pipes that are not leaking. Mm -hmm. uh, and so um, it, that it was very successful, and they won uh, the um, team, uh, won the presidential trophy. Um, and each uh, team need to choose a specific SDG target. Um, mm. in order to present their work to an international audience. Mm. Not unlike how nowadays the university social responsibility programs must also choose specific SDG mm. targets uh, as a way to communicate to international partners. So in this case, that would be target 6.4, which is to increase water use efficiency and ensure fresh water supplies. That's one of the concrete SDG targets. And their um, trophy is the shape of Taiwan with a micro projector underneath. Uh, and the trophy uh, carries um, well, no money price. Uh, but if you turn on the micro projector, it projects Dr. Tsai ing mm -hmm. handing you the trophy. <laughs> so the trophy <laughs> describes itself. Uh, and uh, if you need extra budget or if you need um, the law changed uh, in your favor or whatever, uh, you just talk to the minister and then you project the president and the minister does what you want to do. Uh, and because um, the award is basically the president promising five teams every year, whatever they did in the past three months will become public policy in the next 12 months. So that's a presidential executive power as a hackathon award. Uh, and so um, the Taiwan Water Corporation got the funding and the personnel they need to implement this system not only in Taiwan but in the entirety of Taiwan. Uh, and the uh, uh, lightning of uh, uh, GovNet, uh, which is an accelerator in New Zealand, um, discovered because we share this SDG uh, symbol, right? SDG 6.4, they were just shopping for teams uh, that could solve the problem for them. They, they did not have that problem because New Zealand um, has plenty of fresh water. Mm -hmm. But because of climate change, we are now increasingly mm -hmm. facing water shortage. Uh, and so um, the Wellington Water Company uh, asked the Lion Lab in New Zealand, uh, who can partner uh, with them. The Lion Lab uh, of Texas saying, hey, we know this Taiwanese presidential hackathon and we know this team. Uh, and so they um, invited the Taiwan Water Corporation people to come over to Wellington. Uh, to wow. participate in a kind of lean startup like uh, accelerator camp. Uh, and so uh, they worked with their uh, New Zealand's local government data, non government data, and so on, into what we call a data collaborative, which is by itself another SDG goal, the 1780 to enhance the reliability of available data. So instead of a kind of off the shelf solution that our water corporation sells to, uh, to Wellington, they actually send the algorithm designers to Wellington to build their own models of the leakage prediction for the um, you know, Wellington Water Corporation. And this shows me uh, a, a lot of uh, trust, right? Uh, because uh, if you do not trust another jurisdiction, if you do not trust another economy, you, you would not hand your water flow and uh, pressure data. Uh, that's, that's very sensitive utility information. Uh, to the algorithm that they help design, but because um, this is a common uh, issue faced by both sides, like we're not in this for profit, we're in this so that our citizens don't have to suffer, right? And, and so uh, the trust is easier to build between the two water corporations uh, as opposed to a traditional procurement or a contract and so on. So they eventually deliver the solutions together. Uh, and so if you just check out the Presidential Hackathon website, uh, every year we have a palette right. of the top teams and right. each one would correspond then to one specific uh, sustainable development goal. And then you can just tell the team's story. Um, and for example, you uh, were in the Social Innovation Lab, you probably passed uh, our drinking fountain downstairs, and you probably see this large um, uh, blue ish uh, Monica there uh, that says phone child or, or, or tea service, right? 
right? And, and what, what it's trying to do is that uh, it encourages people to explore culturally uh, the local offerings uh, and uh, build a social network rating whether the water tastes sweet there or the water tastes <laughs> sweet there uh, in the different places. And if you collect those different points like Pokemon Go, uh, you can also uh, enjoy in a locally culturally significant um, shops and so on, uh, the local drinks. Uh, and so it's a, it's a way to actually reduce plastic. It's yeah, SDG right, yeah, right. to reduce plastic bottle use, but it doesn't quite say that. <laughs> it, it says that it, it's, a, it's a fun game uh, that they invite people to play because their theory of change is that if people are used to uh, get bottles, uh, plastic bottles, because it's convenient, yeah. uh, there's no way that you, you can convince them out of it. If you give them a water bottle yeah. that's reusable for free, they would just use it to host flowers or something. <laughs> but they would still get uh, you know, fresh plastic bottles. And mm -hmm. even when Taiwan recycles 95% of the plastic bottles, mm -hmm. the base number is very large. So the 5% is mm -hmm. still a lot. Mm -hmm. So their social impact goal is to reduce 1% mm -hmm. of that mm -hmm. uh, plastic bottle. Uh, but they do so uh, through a essentially a body or she, a, a game that's played on the city scale. Um, and so, yeah, uh, they want the presidential high government, by the way. Uh, and so now uh, I have to you know, promote them. Uh, and so you see a lot of silly things um, that the Environmental Protection Authority uh, poses, our EPA. Uh, they will post uh, silly pictures like this. Um, this mm -hmm. is a joint yeah, 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 report. Yeah, that's yeah, 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 right. <laughs> <laughs> the latest one. Right, that, that's right. The, the, the latest one. And, and because um, it used to be just a uh, social sector movement, uh, but because of presidential hackathon, they were able to work directly with public servants from the Environmental Protection uh, Agency. So the EPA now uh, basically feels that it's well within their yearly goal because uh, if they say no, they will just turn on the trophy and they will see the president show <laughs> <laughs> to, to help encourage the team, right? Uh, and so, so now it's actually part of their uh, official policy. So yeah, we, we just have a fresh uh, batch of five winners from presidential hackathon. So feel free to check the website and check their stories. Okay, so you mean that uh, for international cooperation, yeah. Yeah. it's uh, yeah, kind of through, just share the, through share the, the presidential hexagon. Yeah, uh, we also had an international track. Uh, so the last year, uh, the international track winners were Honduras and Malaysia, if I'm not mistaken. Right, right. Uh, and this year is still uh, going on, uh, but there's a lot of uh, entries also from uh, Guo Hui, uh, our uh, oh, right. kind of diplomatic arm of international development and support. Uh, and I think it's really good because now uh, Guo Hui, uh, through the work, also understand that uh, crowdfunding uh, and so on are important, not because of the money, but rather because of the public participation. Uh, mm -hmm. So so you now see Guo Hui doing public crowdfunding goals. It used to be that they only take funding from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, uh, from MOFA, right? But uh, if you now uh, search for Guo uh, Hui, um, you, you will probably um, see there, it's, it's a crowdfunding campaign, uh, which is uh, called Taiwan Got Your Back, uh, Taiwan Ting Zhao, uh, which is a Ting Zhao de. So um, it, it, yeah, it's a mask campaign that sends uh, uh, the, the masks to the Eswatini um, ah. skill development uh, program so that uh, instead of having to cancel uh, the skill development program um, we will just send them such uh, PBEs so that they can uh, resume this uh, skill development even uh, amidst uh, the COVID pandemic uh, and so it's important uh, for us to uh, share this uh, crowdfunding um, campaigns. So not only I recorded a message and Minister Chen Shizhong recorded a message, <laughs> we, we also enlist our social media friends and so on. And, and that's how we make Eswatini, I guess, relevant uh, to the Taiwanese people uh, and also make Taiwanese people relevant to the people in, in Eswatini uh, through digital diplomatic um, actions like this. So yeah, that's also something that uh, we can say is SDG related. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just wonder through what kind of platform, and I didn't understand about the hack song. Yeah. Does it mean what that do they do? Now I understand. Yeah, to figure that. out solutions right. that solve local problems, but yes. have an international application, right. or encourage teams across the world to solve their problems and then share their vision with us. Right. Yeah. Okay. Shouldn't we have that kind of uh, events mm -hmm. for the uh, university mm -hmm. students? Yeah, sure. Many university students participate. 
in the in the in presidential the, hackathon. In, in the presidential oh. hackathon. Yeah. As I mentioned, the Water Savior team is National Chemistry yeah. University. Right, 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 right. Yeah, uh, oh. I, I think a lot of students uh, look at this uh, as a way to essentially spend three months in a kind of like internship. Uh, but they yeah. do something that is immediately impactful instead of uh, just as a exercise. Okay, now, and I thought about the uh, the Water Savior the grant the oh the South Bound uh, policy yeah. we got a uh, grant and uh, oh, to yes. support uh, the Philipp uh, students from Philippines and uh, Vietnam yeah. mm -hmm. to come to Taiwan to study and awesome. we want to show them uh, how we do the pandemic and how freedom mm -hmm. we have however mm -hmm. but just because of this pandemic it's mm -hmm. quite hard to get students from the Philippines mm -hmm. you know? Quarantine so, 14 days here. Uh, and we, were, we thought about why not do it online then? But mm -hmm. would that be possible? Of course it's possible. Yeah, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. Yeah. The, more, the more students there will be, right? Because Yeah, sure. Because then, then you get to connect. Because uh, when you're online, the main thing is the time zone. If, right. if yeah. the time zone but differs time too zone much, will, it, will, it will be very, very painful. Yeah. Uh, but if uh, for Taiwan and Philippines, yeah, it's not, not, not that big a problem. So, uh, what would be the main concern if we have this online? Mm -hmm. Social yeah. awareness, sure. environmental protection. Environmental protection is good. Uh, like uh, just I was like, thinking about yeah. cultural, um, cultural immersion. Uh -huh. So they get to know more about Taiwan because everybody uh -huh. thinks in the world that uh -huh. There's no Taiwan as a country, you know. <laughs> There's only China, something like that. So I guess uh, Taiwan has really become popular because of this COVID-19. So yeah. I think we have to modify that more. <laughs> yeah, right, right. And I'm thinking that because of uh, COVID-19 and Taiwan become a very safe and a freedom country, yeah, yeah, sure. and is there any way that uh, we, uh, we would like to uh, uh, we have a lot of uh, international students, and it seems like uh, shrinking because of the uh, pandemic. Yeah. But I think because of the pandemic, Taiwan should be the, the first choice mm -hmm. for international mm -hmm. students. Is mm -hmm. there a way the government to do this, to mm -hmm. recruit yes. them, to yeah. come to Taiwan to study? Mm -hmm. for, uh, yeah. Sure. Uh, well, there's a few things going on, right? Because if it's only the student that travels, but not their families and so on, then the 14-day quarantine uh, yeah. is a problem. Uh, and, uh, and But we're not going to relax that because the reason why Taiwan is so safe is because of the 14-day yeah. quarantine, yeah. right? Um, and so uh, I, I really think digital is, is better. Um, the, the digital route uh, is what I would go uh, because the for example, the, the social innovation summit uh, that we have this year is entirely online, and then we timed the summit uh, to coincide with the Social Enterprise World Forum, which was going to take place in Nova Scotia, Canada. Uh, but nowadays, um, we, we don't have to uh, physically travel to Nova Scotia and back. Um, I mean, traveling there probably not a big problem. Going back, we have to spend two weeks <laughs> in quarantine, yeah. right? Uh, and so uh, we just managed to merge the two curriculums together. Uh, so that's the two events uh, managed to dodge each other mm -hmm. in terms of time. And we say that if you get a ticket here, uh, then you automatically get a ticket for the SEWF. Um, and then the other way around too. Uh, and so we swap the tickets, uh, like 1,000 tickets uh, both ways. Mm -hmm. uh, and so just enrolling in one, automatically enrolling in the other. Uh, and then uh, because of people have different working schedules and so on, we say, oh, by the way, we'll keep the, the video, um, you know, uh, for, for one year. So you can re-engage and organize study groups or whatever based on that uh, interactive content. Uh, and that's pretty successful. Uh, and also, um, I, there's also a user device uh, that organizes, I think, the user experience uh, summit. Uh, and then uh, the idea is there's a 24 hours of content and he invited a person from each different time zone uh, to host a session there uh, to their nearby time zones. Uh, and so that people in Africa or people yes. in uh, you know, different parts of Europe do not feel that uh, each part is you know, less privileged or more privileged. Uh, they can all share their local solutions and local learnings. 
uh, and of course nobody can attend all of it, <laughs> but that's fine uh, because it's a rolling content that really truly feels that uh, the globe is in solidarity uh, with the um, common COVID challenge there. So I think Taiwan is, is really good to uh, contribute both as a host because we have really good internet connection everywhere uh, mm -hmm. and also uh, as a participant uh, because uh, we do uh, have ways to um, connect to all the different 17 SDGs as compared mm -hmm. to some nearby jurisdictions who mostly specialize in one or two of the SDGs contributions uh, we can honestly say for all 17 we have contributions to make uh, so yeah nowadays I wake up early to have video calls with people in the North and South America and I uh, work until the evening to have calls uh, with Africa and Europe uh, and, and that really uh, is uh, this kind of cross time zone uh, working environment that we're, we're looking for uh, and so yeah it was some planning uh, I think this is much preferred um, as opposed to you know flying people back and forth, mm -hmm. which not only have quarantine um, issues but also have carbon emission issues too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, 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 right. You have right. to plant That's a lot right. of trees to offset. Right, right, right. <laughs> right. So no mm -hmm. traveling. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's better. That's right. Yeah. That's the beauty of technology. Mm -hmm. yes. Right, right. Everyone can reach out. Yeah, okay. But another question about sure. your self study sure. in English. Sure, sure. I know your first uh, foreign language is German, yeah. right? And then yeah. when do you, I did, yeah. uh, when <laughs> do you <laughs> start to learn English and then how? 15. Yeah. Uh -huh. Do you have any yeah. strategy to tell us, it, it our students? Just play this game, game <laughs> called Magic the Gathering. So, Games? Yeah, it's a trading Magic card game yeah. called, called Magic the Gathering. Or Magic. Top game play. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, it's a collectible parking. Is it because uh, you have the environment to use the language? Yeah, it's a chattering, right? So I oh, just hop on Internet Relay Chat or IRC uh, and then chat with people who uh -huh. also play this card game. Uh, well, that, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think just find something that people feel interested in and then the immersive environment. Uh, and then the vocabulary, um, even though uh, later I would learn that the uh, Magic the Gathering cards are using very difficult um, vocabulary. Um, like uh, just for uh, a simple, what they call counter spell, is a part of the, the, the game. Um, we get to learn about words like uh, dissipate, unknown, abeyance, uh, and things like that. But uh, for me, I mean, these are my native vocabularies because these are the first English words that I say. Uh, and so uh, then I wouldn't think it as necessarily something difficult because each of them is a card. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, well how do you do not end and ask the question? Sure, sure. 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 Uh -huh. time. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> Thank you. So I, I actually have a question about SDGs. Sure, sure. So this mean, uh, we've been working on as Taiwan SDGs since last mm -hmm. December, right? Yeah. So um, the Sustainable Development Council uh -huh. really set many general points to make sure that uh -huh. uh, every ministry that achieves uh -huh. the goal according to the schedule. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. And the voluntary national review. Yes. Yeah. But the truth is that Actually, mm -hmm. in the seven, 17 uh, SDG goals, there, there are many goals that are actually repeated. Uh -huh. yes, or yeah, yeah. Or and there are there's ones that are all all like forgotten, like 16. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so uh, there's ones extra, like the 18s. Where did yes, that come the, from? The, 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 <laughs> yeah, the AI anti nuclear one. That's right. Yes. <laughs> Yes, is that true? <laughs> it, it, it's true. It's just true, right? Because we're not a UN member, we get to do whatever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. So I, I'm just wondering, if, because we have we have to fill many uh, our data mm -hmm. for the for our, for our goal yeah. every year, because we have got our goals in uh, 2030 and 20, 20, 2020 and 2030. The public sector goals. Yeah, yes. Yes. Uh -huh. So because of the repeated items, I think whether uh -huh. I can, we can just digitalize uh -huh. something that we can just uh, fill it online. Yeah. Because every time we have to fill something repeated, it's really 
I know, I know. Time. Word documents and all that. Yes, yes. yes. And if you can just feel one, for example, just feel uh, goal number six, mm -hmm. something uh, 6.3, 1.1 mm -hmm. for that. And maybe the other one, which is repeated, you can just show. Of course. Uh, the other part. Of course. For I think they do that for the uh, kind of uh, justice reform tracking system, uh, oh. the Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. I think they, yeah, that, that, that's there too. Yeah. So, so is there is there any plan that we can build some type? Of I haven't used the tracking system you just mentioned. Uh, oh. Is there a website address or something? Because I, I'm uh, in charge of social innovation, yes. which is meeting the SDGs uh, from social entrepreneurship, yes. which is the cross section uh, between the business sector and the social sector. Uh, and so we also use SDGs, uh, but the uh, uh, tracking is done in, for example, the GRI reports uh, mm. of the companies uh, or the um, B Labs uh, kind of B Corp uh, scorecards uh, for smaller enterprises uh, or for not for profit the sector, it may be a SRS assessment and things like that. So there are also methodologies to track their own promises, uh, mm. but uh, these are different from what the government system uses. Um, and so um, I think the uh, Minister of Finance uh, just said that in a few years, uh, like large public listed companies yeah. have to uh, orient uh, all toward SDG. So it's no longer optional or good to have, uh, but they have to report by SDG terms. Uh, and so um, there's a um, startup here uh, called Sustain Hub, I think. Sustain Hub. Yeah, if you search for uh, Sustain Hub Taiwan or something, um, then you, you may find it, uh, but uh, yeah, I'm also trying to, to find it. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, maybe I misremembered it's the same. I'll, I'll find it. Yeah, the so uh, the point is that um, the um, the reporting from the commercial sector um, takes care of the, the kind of the kind of no you know double reporting and so on issues uh, as we do. Uh, but for the EPA, I'm not sure that we're um, contracting the same contractors, <laughs> and and, and we're, I'm not sure that um, how we're aligning with the voluntary local reviews either, because the uh, Taoyuan, Taipei, and New Taipei City have each. Uh, contracted their own kind of systemic reports uh, for their voluntary local reviews. Uh, but last I checked, uh, these are not synchronized uh, with the voluntary national review uh, in our national side. So it, it may be that the three municipalities are more technologically advanced than we are, uh, which is yeah. usually the case anyway. Uh, <laughs> so so uh, yeah, I think that's definitely something that we can look into, but I don't have the URL to that system. Oh. Yet, yeah, so maybe you can send me that with my uh, name, name. Maybe you yeah. can send me yeah. That's right. Wow. Yeah, and I'm happy to help. For me here, so from my students, it's more for business administration department there. Mm -hmm. um, so for this, it's kind of a difficult for students to have a long term partner. Mm -hmm. As a case for each course, is only for one semester, yeah, that's right. and it's a pretty short mm -hmm. time I know, I know. <laughs> to focus on one thing. Right. But I just mentioned there, I think it's the wonderful for this as short time. It's a three month internship. Is that what you mentioned that for mm -hmm. SDG and then this, uh, is there any way that um, mm -hmm. your SDG has kind of a lot of goals there? Yeah. And is there any opportunity for students to kind of a short term focus to get involved? Mm -hmm. for like how short is short? Okay. 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 So, uh, but, but just to your point, uh, the, the thing I was looking at was Yong Xun Zhi Hu or Sustain Hub. I, I type a extra N uh, and then I couldn't find it, but it's uh, easier to remember it's the Tai Hub, I guess. Yeah, the Sustain Hub. What what they're doing? is they use uh, AI uh, to analyze all the uh, publicly filed data of the sustainable reports uh, from the organizations uh, so that um, you can both um, kind of predict uh, what is uh, more important when you're looking for CSR opportunities if you're an MPO 
working on SDG kind of grants uh, from the large CSR companies. Or if you are one of those CSR companies, uh, you can also use their AI to generate uh, SDG reports. <laughs> and so, yeah, yeah. Simulate yeah. yeah, I think that, that's a very, very worthy um, idea because basically it saves uh, a lot of chores. Yes. Uh, it makes sure that you only focus on the metrics uh, and then it's automatically built a GRI standard compliance report for you. Uh, I think that's a, a really good vendor uh, to, to look to. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> right. so, so, so back to the, the student engagement. Um, well, maybe because I just came uh, back from the Mingdao model of United Nations. Uh, I, I happen to think model UN is a pretty good idea. Yeah, like uh, just put people into this um, kind of board game-ish like uh, position where they have to tackle climate change, uh, disinformation, uh, nuclear proliferation, generation, whatever uh, things that are structurally affecting the globe. Uh, and uh, the younger the students are, the more they understand they're at the business end, right? <laughs> well, we're not going to see most of the climate change effects they are. Right? So, so they, there will be an urgency uh, in them uh, to participate. And so there's many board games here, uh, actually the majority of which focus on SDGs. Uh, that could be uh, the beginning of the curriculum of a one month or two months uh, internship-ish. Thing that to solve a, a kind of local issue that's corresponding to the SDGs. Um, there's a Japanese game, uh, the 20, it's just called 2030 SDG game. Yes. Uh, yeah, 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 it's introduced by the Chaobang. Uh, yeah, yes, uh, right. yeah, yeah, we, we, we did that. Yeah, uh, and uh, there's, there's actually many more, um, right? Uh, so, yeah, I think if you look at the SI that I won, uh, or the Shofei Chuan Xinping Pad, you, you will see plenty of uh, people offering this kind of courses uh, and this kind of internship uh, opportunities. Um, like the, the third one here, the Haoshi Shofei Chie, also develops their own board game uh, around the SDGs and has uh, been uh, used in uh, K-12 curriculums as well. Yeah, I think most board games we play here are SDG. There was I think only the Kaohsiung Park Mingxi, the bombardment of uh, cacao that's not really related to SDG, uh, but that we also play here. Everything else we play here is SDG related. Yeah. Actually, I quite enjoy the, the SDG board yeah. we have yeah. in our program. Yeah. Because that is really inspiring if you're playing that game. Yeah, yeah. very much so. so yeah. yeah, that kind of game can put it in university. Yeah, you have the same yeah. game like uh, Austria Town Oh, really? Yes. Yeah, in my PowerPoint, that I, I, I say it. Oh, uh, there yeah. was a picture of Austria Town sitting in the back, and yeah. Jackie Chan was uh, conducting the yes. whole game. Oh, oh yes. Yes. Because yeah. Yeah. So they were all in there. Yeah, like yes. this. Yes, right. Just yes. I really awesome. enjoy that. Yeah, it's a really good game. Uh, yes. So just, just, just get more people, I don't know, advocating the scheme and playing the game together. That, that, that goes a long way because then people can find their own kind of uh, good life goals uh, as part of uh, playing the scheme. Yeah. Um, yeah, by, by good life goals, I really mean uh, good life goals. Uh, there's a kind of reiteration of the sustainability goals yeah. in terms of what each individual can do. Uh, in, in their daily lives. Mm -hmm. uh, it's much more cute. I yeah, would argue. that's the cute part of the yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. It's, a, it's a cute version of the right. SDGs. And we all know that cuteness is Taiwan's <laughs> uh, most culture. reigning, right, right, the, the cultural uh, mainstream, right, like bubble, bubble tea, right, it has to right. be cute or something. <laughs> right, right, right. right. So, so, yeah, it, it, the cutesy part uh, is taken care of by, um, I think, CSR1 uh, did the translation. <laughs> of the, the life goals uh, into Mandarin Chinese. So that's also something that uh, you can consider uh, sharing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Minister Tom, yes. can I ask about our ocean policy? Sure, of course. of course. Because I love swimming, especially mm -hmm. swimming in the sea. Okay. I grew up in Canada, I lived here for 10 years, so, uh -huh. you know, I understand the Western perspective. But when, you know, when a Westerner sees the, the beach, right, mm -hmm. the beach, they, they think, the first thing that comes to your mind is fun. It's a yeah. beach is a place for uh, relaxation right. and swimming. Right. But definitely not a sea guard, yeah. coastal guard. 
Yeah. So in, in Taiwan, um, I remember Premier Su Zhengcheng last year yeah. unveiled the open yeah. up the, the mountain, right. the Sun Lin Jie Jing policy. And, and now we're now ocean. we're in the open up the sea. Ah, so yeah, right. Right. Yeah. 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 So we have, yeah. including the the right. openness oh. part, the transparency part, uh, yes. the convenience part, so the education yeah. part, yeah. as well as the risk part. Yeah. So, yeah. so yeah. I think we need to promote more of uh, you know we keep talking about the ocean, oceanic culture, maritime yeah. culture, Hayamuwa, but people always uh, sarcastically say that yeah. we only have a seafood. Seafood. We do have a seafood. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> but then I understand also because of our mm -hmm. background, we used to be under martial law, so it's mm -hmm. difficult to access the ocean. If you want to go out, you need to permit or whatever. Yeah, the coastal guard. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, it's not easy for the average Taiwanese citizen to go into the sea and yeah. enjoy the ocean. It's, it's yeah. also kind of dangerous in you know, people's minds. So mm -hmm. are we doing anything to promote and try to change this culture and yeah. even promote Taiwan's uh, beaches and coastline to attract more tourism because we have good beaches too. And, then, and, then, and also at the same time to clean up our beaches, that's also a big thing. So I know. maybe we can connect all the dots encourage more people to get closer to the beach, clean our own beach, beaches up, and then we can therefore enjoy the, the, the beach, the, our coast, yeah, definitely, coastal area. Definitely, more. definitely. Yeah, that, that's going to be, uh, you know, uh, the Shanghai Chixing Forum. Uh, I'm, I'm going to participate uh, in that forum uh, uh, alongside our um, Secretary General of the Administration, uh, I think, next Friday. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and where uh, we will talk about the uh, online uh, consultation that involves um, a huge number of ministries uh, that uh, can plan together uh, the, the open up the ocean policy. Uh, the tool that we use called POLIS basically um, takes care of people's uh, ideas and each could be upvoted or downvoted uh, by other people. So we not only understand what is the most Controversial, uh, which is about you know um, they right the, the kinds of fish uh, that are restricted um, for uh, amateur uh, fish uh, fishing as a sport, but actually we have a lot of consensus item that everybody agrees, no matter whether they're um, just people who enjoy um, the, the sea or people who enjoy catching fish from the sea. Uh, and so we were going to uh, work on the consensus items first, uh, and that's going to be next Friday, uh, and uh, after that, I think there will be a white paper-ish thing published uh, that informs the local, municipal, and county uh, governments uh, in order to, uh, as you said, to integrate them together so that people can take care of the ocean together instead of relying um, on coastal guards, uh, which both um, is over-duty nowadays. Uh, and, and also, um, if uh, people do not know how to take care of the ocean, they're just like the mountains. Uh, mm -hmm. They're the only people with, I don't know, financial or criminal incentives do. Uh, and that's not really good, right? So what we're doing instead is just to make sure that people visit uh, however they want, understanding, of course, the inherent risk and the duties, insurance and so on, that they have to fulfill. Uh, but then uh, everybody can, can take care of this uh, together, just as uh, we open up the mountains, restricting only the cars, but not people anymore. So it, initially there was, of course, uh, people who uh, do not take care of their responsibilities, but because many, many people do, uh, and everybody has a mobile phone, <laughs> so a, a societal norm uh, soon uh, emerged so that people would not uh, pollute the environment. Yeah, I mean, I, I propose this idea that uh, you almost like adopt a beach, then yeah, yeah. Kind of, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, for example, Kaohsiung City has seats in one beach, and yeah. I was disappointed in the past few years that uh, that beach is neglected, it's not even open to the public. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe the new mayor, uh, Chen Chi Mai, will do something about that. Yeah. Oh, because if you go to any sure city in, in the West, in Western countries, if they have a beach, they, they would think this is one of their greatest assets, mm -hmm. just like a river. They want it to be pretty, to be clean, and every citizen can access it. it it's their sure. res common resource. Yes. And it's absurd, unthinkable to have a beach like that and not be being used yes. and enjoyed by yeah. citizens. Yeah. And so it was just, and then Dan Shui has the uh, Samu Beach, for example, right? When I came back to Taiwan in 1998, 20 years ago, it was open to the public. Mm -hmm. But nowadays, it's, a lot of beaches are just being in neglect and just yeah. dirty and it's not being used. Mm -hmm. So it's just an asset and we just let it sit there idle and just mm -hmm. not use yeah. its potential. And people just 
you, if it's not being used neglected, it's just throw trash there. Yeah. Area, area. So, see, I hope we can do something about that. Yeah, de definitely, yeah. definitely. Uh, yeah, we, we already uh, solved part of that uh, puzzle by uh, making the kind of uh, harvest uh, open to amateur fishers people. Uh, initially, the professional uh, fishers, uh, fishers uh, do not uh, like being interfered with and so on, but we eventually managed uh, a way for them to do amateur uh, fishing, uh, uh, maybe just mm -hmm. one part of the harbor, so that they can still uh, participate uh, in their sport uh, without uh, interfering with professional features mm -hmm. uh, and then they can all kind of utilize it together and make sure that people who pollute uh, the waters and so on um, do, do not uh, walk away and you know without people noticing and so there's a a new website actually, uh, ocean.taiwan.gov uh, that, right, that lists uh, all the all the information that I uh, just mentioned and, and then and then some more, right? So both the rules about a uh, harbor, how to use it, um, the local attractions uh, along the uh, beaches and so on, even measurement stations <laughs> that can show the uh, rising tide <laughs> and things yeah. like that. And, and it's pretty comprehensive. Uh, and so just like the people who climb uh, mountains have their um, kind of social hub to share their hiking trails and things like that, like hiking book and so on, uh, we look forward to um, share this data uh, with uh, developers around the world uh, so that they can um, more fully utilize uh, the resources that we have um, here uh, and encourage people to uh, get to the ocean more. So, so if you um, you know watch the hashtag Shanghai Chitin, you'll probably uh, see more in the coming days, and we very much welcome your input. Yeah, thank you. I'm glad you mentioned how you are interested in ocean culture because yeah. I just received a grant from the MOE, oh. and we're going to dedicate it to design a curriculum uh, dedicated to um, three SDG goals. Mm -hmm. One is um, quality education. Yeah. And one is uh, Life below. Mm -hmm. Sure. Water. Yeah. Water. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and then uh, the gender quality. Ah, yeah. So okay. we're going to cool. yeah uh, find mm -hmm. uh, the uh, mm -hmm. lessons and how mm -hmm. that would be incorporated those issues mm -hmm. into primary school. Uh, cool. Work cool. For it's four, five, and fourteen. Yeah, and for the nice bilingual education. It's a yeah. Nice combination. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know in our Aboriginal culture, the, the language, the, the, the Yame mm -hmm. people, yeah, also the, 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 Ame, the coastal armies, in their traditional culture, the ocean is a very important part of that culture. Mm -hmm. They have, really have an ocean culture here. Yes. Maybe, maybe that's their livelihood. Yeah, and also some is very close to yeah. the harbor, and it seems like we seldom think about the ocean. And so uh, I'm going to collaborate with the uh, local uh, primary schools and bring students to see those uh, ocean culture interests. Or there are more student beach cleanup trips. Yes. Yeah. 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 Sure. A bunch of students, a yeah. hundred of them, to go clean up the beach yeah. and educate them on the like yeah. the right. sea marine so life. So I would like to yeah. invite you into my team if you're interested team. in that. Yeah, because it's no longer projects. like English language learning is also uh, combined with some uh, global issues. You know, yeah. Yeah. And you feel connected to the world. That's right. So That's right. we share the same um, situation. Or we can also cooperate with foreign countries. I mean, for example, um, there's a show Baywatch, right, in America yes. with yes. the lifeguards. Yeah. So but in Taiwan, I feel like the lifeguards were, are underfunded. Like We don't have enough money to hire lifeguards to position them in different beaches. So a lot of beaches, uh, accidents happen because we don't even have a lifeguard there. So if we uh, work with Australia, they're a really uh, um, strong ocean country right now. Mm -hmm. uh, and just you know, invite some lifeguards to come over here and you know, give some lectures or, or teachings in English yeah. uh, to, to even train our lifeguards and then we can do a bilingual thing as well, right? Yeah, so, that's so really nice. Just basically, the, the whole idea also, also makes me think about uh, more exchanges and interactions between our civil servants and, and civil servants in their you know, mm -hmm. respective agencies yeah. in their own country. So sometimes we're blocked by China because we cannot do country to country. Uh, in exchanges. But there's a lot of municipal to municipal, yeah, municipal exchange. That, right. that, that, that's uninterrupted. That's right. So we, we need to do more of that than uh, just have uh, you know, our civil servants can visit their country and their civil servants can visit our country. Mm -hmm. and, just, and then we have to speak in English, right? right. So that's just more interaction and cooperation. Mm -hmm. yes.
Hey, it's it's. Uh, I think the Ministry of Culture has uh, this kind of program uh, with France, uh, and uh, there's. I think it's less seen in the uh, national level of the government, maybe because of political reasons, yeah. but but also because it's harder to transfer because uh, I mean experience because the national level policy making is so uh, tied to the kind of legislative uh, politics so that it doesn't easily transfer across one country to another. But every municipal uh, is probably pretty similar <laughs> to many other cities uh, in the world in terms of its uh, location and its um, you know, strengths and it, that's SDG that it cares about. Uh, so uh, far as I understand, uh, we, we have a municipal exchange programs uh, with a lot of um, countries, but that's still on the national uh, part. Yeah, and I've heard of um, firefighters from Australia visiting our new Taipei city. That's right. That's it's right. like sort of like a, yeah. you know, sister city or sister department. Exactly. Like exactly. Just, maybe you can hold some sort of event together or some sort of weekend festival and just with uh, the, the, the you know, lifeguards from Australia mm -hmm. to go and mm -hmm. our own lifeguards. And yeah. Like whole ship events. Yes. And then yes. promote our beach and then somehow beach safety as well as water safety training. Yeah. That kind of thing is just be creative. About yeah, I, I think it's a great yeah. idea. Yeah. It's a great idea. I, I'm mm -hmm. going to next week meet one of Taipei City's sister cities, uh, Prague. Uh, and uh, uh -huh. yeah, yeah, the, yeah. the mayor was here in the social innovation lab. Uh, and uh, he, he really liked the place. So um, maybe I could do him, maybe he could do him. <laughs> but uh, we will make sure that we talk about uh, this kind of exchange uh, between the public servants. I think it's a really good idea. Yeah, because I, I, I just want to say that uh, sometimes you think that, okay, because we don't have this culture, but in the, you know, foreign countries, they have this culture. So if we just cooperate and uh, do some learning, teaching together, then we, we will pick up this culture. Mm -hmm. Just look at uh, going to the gym, weight training. Mm -hmm. When That's I first right. came back 20 years ago, again, no. he wasn't popular in Taiwan, yes. but mm -hmm. Canada, of course, you know, my younger brother who goes to the gym, right, Canadian people, mm -hmm. mostly mm -hmm. a lot of them go to the gym, but look at now, yeah. when uh, Instagram, yeah. Facebook, the younger generation, mm -hmm. they've got gyms popping up everywhere. Mm -hmm. The right. girls are going to the gym to do weight training. That's yes. right. So now we have this gym bodybuilding culture now, yes. the younger yes. generation. It wasn't. It didn't exist 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. So ocean culture, we just need to invite mm -hmm. people who are already good at that and to yeah, come and uh, yeah. teach us this culture. Mm -hmm. You know, make it more ex um, mm -hmm. acceptable to the general public. Or mm -hmm. once they think yeah. this is fun and fashionable, younger people will, mm -hmm. will jump jump on right? and mm -hmm. just catch on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, I think the the gold current uh, really helps here because. They could be uh, still, you know, YouTubers or <laughs> people who work uh, not necessarily for a Taiwanese corporation because previously you have to find a local employer uh, and if your employment terminates, so does your resident uh, certificate uh, or, or your visa, right, your work yeah. visa. Uh, and, but, but nowadays we have this idea of a gold card, uh, in which case that people who um, are still, you know, working for themselves, working international company, digital nomads, and so on, uh, they don't have to work for any particular employer, but, but they can still um, stay in Taiwan for three years and participate in pretty much exactly the same way as a, uh, you know, a ARC holder could. Uh, and so um, it's basically uh, a kind of support group that they have been putting together at TaiwanGoldCard.com. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, and uh, um, I think right. there, there's all, oh, all, around a thousand holders now. Uh, and uh, um, there's many, uh, I think a hundred of them on TaiwanGoldCard.com uh, that guides people. Uh, like the first button was, do I qualify for the gold card? That was not that permanent, uh, prominent in the homepage, so I suggested that I put it there. Uh, and then uh, also they walk you through the application process and talk about life in Taiwan and things like that. So, um, and that community is a open community, so anyone can suggest um, you know, improvements um, to that um, uh, community. And the community basically um, visited me and uh, several of them said that they've never felt so patriotic in their home country. <laughs> so some of them actually came to Taiwan just on a tourist visa, uh, but then the COVID happened and then they discovered the go car community and wow. then they converted a six month uh, tourist visa to a three year uh, go car visa ready. <laughs> uh, and, and then they started exploring work opportunity because they're not tied to a particular employer. As I said, they may be you know, a programmer or a designer by day, uh, but then a um, guard uh, on the beach on the cold coast uh, or a bodybuilder trainer or whatever by night. Uh, and I think that is uh, really increasing the diversity 
um, of cultures in Taiwan. And when we have such a diverse culture, then our public servants uh, have more opportunity to exercise their English, uh, yes. which also furthers the bilingual nation's goal. Yeah. Yeah. So how many are there now? Uh, the gold card part uh, is, I think, um, around 1,000. Because it, it, it's a new, it's a new visa, uh, and it's not uh, very well known before the pandemic. Mm -hmm. But but now because of the pandemic, uh, people discover suddenly uh, that wow. that is like the, the best thing because they can um, go to Taiwan initially on tourism business trip, back to the home with the Lunar New Year or whatever. Uh, but then they just fly out the go card online. They don't even have to fly out and back. They can just convert uh, into a go card and then get to stay for three years. Mm -hmm. Very flexible. Yeah, yeah it's, it's super flexible. Because I remember the working holiday program. Uh -huh. You have a lot of Taoese uh, young people who oh, are yeah, yeah. Oh, well, the yeah. other way yeah. around. Yeah. 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 Not very many uh, young foreign people want to work in Taiwan. Mm -hmm. It's like a very big imbalance. Yeah. But then we can figure out a way to attract young people from, from all over the world, university students yeah. especially, to work in Taiwan. Exactly. To this yeah. increase the cultural exchanges. And each one has a special skill to share with the local sphere, right? That That's right. Work, you know, so it's, it's a good thing. Um, yeah, because when you go to Europe and travel, you check into a hotel, the person at the front desk might not be even from that country. It could be from a different country. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. In Canada, I was in a, in a in, in Banff, uh, Alberta, and then the girl is from actually from a former Yugoslavian Republic. I was surprised. Mm -hmm. right. She was just working in Canada. Okay. Because in Canada, Europe has have signed some sort of agreement allowing young people to work in each other's country freely. So mm -hmm. this this diversity that you get to right. meet with meet with her and then just ask her about her country and so surprised. Yeah. And they can speak English. So we, we should have this kind of opportunity for our young people in Taiwan more and then for foreign young people to come to Taiwan to understand our country and to share their culture with us. That's excellent. Yeah. So this is, yeah so this gold card program sounds like a great idea. Yeah. 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 I've never heard of this but yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, I mean, that they can they can they also bring their that. family uh, mm -hmm. and they and, and if their family stay with them for six months they're also eligible for a national health care so oh. there's a really good package oh. yeah. wow it's, it's a wow. new yeah, never heard about this no we need to promote it to something yeah because so yeah. 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 generous yeah yeah well, <laughs> I don't know about that. I mean, on average, the foreign people using the NHI pay more uh, than they use. So, <laughs> so I don't know about being generous. <laughs> it's a way to make our NHI oh, yeah, more sustainable. Really nice. <laughs> yeah, we're friendly, that's for sure. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Maybe uh, another issue will be about uh, social innovation. Yes. I don't know that, uh, does that mean that you help uh, young people who want to start oh, a anyone, really. bis business? Yeah, anyone really. So they will just come they, to you? Yeah, if they start a business. Okay. Uh, yeah. you know, so I, I have to see that. Uh, okay, that's the master and yeah. uh, the other semester. I was teaching uh, business English. Yeah. Yeah. Also business okay. This is also coming semester. And uh, one of the lessons that we had was innovations. Mm -hmm. And really, students came up with innovative ideas I couldn't believe was possible. Yeah, so for example, I was telling you about that, right? And I recorded all of them, which I said I'm going to show to you guys so that you have an idea how, you know, how innovative our students are, how creative they are. And for example, toothpaste mm. with uh, is that toothbrush with a toothpaste mm -hmm. in one. Ah, okay. I think that's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. And mm. then uh, a luggage with a USB, mm. which you can also use for charging, something like that. Oh, cool, nice. It's, it's really, really oh my gosh, so you know? yeah. When they were doing this in the class, I was like, Mesmerized, really? Wow, that's great. So, what's the follow up we can encourage mm -hmm. them to do? Not just yeah. for the class, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes sure. uh, after class they just. Because they are, they are just like uh, Sun Yanji's third year students. Right, mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. But I think mm -hmm. from this they already have ideas on what to do when mm -hmm. they graduate from college. Mm -hmm. but yeah. 
somehow. But they can apply for the for the U Start but program. That's nice right? to know. Uh, the U Start program from the um, Use Development Agency, uh, the Ministry of Education, uh, is one of the, I think, most venerated entrepreneurship uh, programs uh, that has a large community of fellow innovators uh, to support mm -hmm. them. Um, some um, like household names, well, not really household names, like Acupass and so on, Wodongtong <laughs> and so on, uh, were born out of the U Start uh, plan. And the U Start uh, also um, has a distinction of I think uh, the sustainability of that uh, entrepreneurship idea um, is, I think, higher than 30% or something, which is very, very high uh, considering startups. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think it's a, it's a good uh, platform uh, to, to apply to. Uh, and uh, of course, the U-Start have uh, all sorts of different uh, focus um, every year uh, based on the kind of societal needs and things like that. Uh, but if you can uh, just look at the uh, winners of a few um, cases before. Mm -hmm. uh, you will see that, um, for example, uh, around the, the, the indigenous um, cases uh, that you were um, kind of um, introducing the SDGs not uh, from the uh, Western civilization to the uh, Tao people, right? You mentioned the Arca and so on, but the other way around, right? Uh, sharing the sustainable wisdoms of their indigenous culture to the world. Uh, and that is a, a popular topic, uh, circular economy, uh, reusing kind of agricultural waste uh, for uh, business uh, use, uh, kind of part of the supply chain to reduce carbon footprint. Mm -hmm. uh, that is also a popular um, innovation topic. So yeah, just check out Ustart and, and uh, anyone uh, who are undergrads mm -hmm. uh, or freshly graduated uh, can participate. Is this study and startup? Uh, you start. You dash start. Oh, you start. Okay. You dash start. I think it's a super nice study. Um, the government kind of so useful, and yeah. then the provide us uh, a lot of resources. Yeah. But it's kind of interesting because uh, once we ask, so now we know. But uh -huh. is there any proof? Yeah, I, I, I was just <laughs> searching on this anyway, right? So on our yeah. social innovation lab, uh, if you click uh, for the, the first one, uh, and say Zhengfu Ziyuan Government Resources, uh, and okay. it's actually a bilingual website, so uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, you can click Government uh, Resources. Uh, and then uh, you can search across all the different, like 12 different ministries. Uh, uh, and you can sort by SDG, sort by organization uh, type, sort by the kind of work uh, you're, you're pursuing. And then you will see the not only the um, Ministry of Education, which you're uh, more familiar with, but also the Council of Hakka, the Ministry of Culture, the, the Labor uh, Ministry, and so on. And, and, yeah, and, 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 mm -hmm. and these are, are um, like really detailed because I asked them to put the contact of the, the person, the, the actual um, you know, contractor uh, or institution that runs this program, what exactly they are looking for and so on. So uh, when you call this um, phone, you are uh, much more prepared um, as uh, compared to a traditional uh, search listing. So uh, yeah, just check out the social innovation platform uh, on the government resource part. So it's not in my head. Uh, it was just okay. according to your keyword okay. typing okay. into the search engine. Okay. Uh, and now, now you can do this too. <laughs> <laughs> but it's good to know all this from you. Sure. Yeah. 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 First hand yeah. information. Yes. Thank you. Huh. Right, I think we're pretty much at time. Uh, yes. So if people want to take photos or something. Yeah, of course. That's okay. Yeah. yeah. So do we just sit here and they take the photo display or something? Uh -huh. Uh -huh.